Hello everybody, John Oliver, Links Wildlife Trust. Um, I'm responsible for Willy Tree Fen and I'm now caretaker of the cranes. So in the last 12 years, we've transformed a former farm back into an iconic fenland landscape. Like many species, cranes don't just require one habitat type, but yet a bit of a mosaic, including open water, wet reed, fen vegetation, dry meadows and wet grassland. But it's not just about getting the habitat right. Cranes also don't like people. Uh, they require plenty of space and on a small site such as Willow Tree, simply put, it's grains or people. Uh, this is reflected in the attached map. The orange represents the breeding area used by cranes and the red is a 200 meter disturbance free area they need around the breeding ground. They never strayed within the red area to the south and always stayed at least 200 meters away from the road despite the habitat being correct. They're very sensitive. In both pictures, the male female is on the left. She's got the light grey bustle and is smaller in size, whereas the male is a very dark black bustle. This is not indicative of cranes. Either male or female can be larger and the bustle colour is variable between both sexes. So we start our crane story for 2021, actually at the end of the 2020 season. The site access reopened on the 5th of October. The cranes were last seen on the 11th, and I believe reopening the reserve moved them off. A few days later, cranes, three cranes, two adults and a juvenile arrived on the knee, and we believe that this was our family group. Once the cranes have finally left, the 2021 se season, our crane work could begin. During the first season, we observed the cranes pacing the fence line, and it appeared that they were trying to move fields, but couldn't due to the fencing. A small opening was created and within two days they found and used it. But at this location, uh, a fox was seen on several occasions, making it a possible ambush point. So we decided to create two crane bridges across the dike to give them more options to move between the two fields, thus reducing the threat from predators. Uh, the next step was to move the cattle on. Uh, onto the fields to help keep the structure and the pools open, graze the meadows down completely as we're unable to do a haircut. Um, we've relatively light grazing across the reed and fen, monitor the vegetation until the level was right and then remove stock. Throughout the breeding season, we've been maintaining a water level of about 1.2 ODN, creating a depth of about 43 centimetres across the pools. Once it was grazed and stock were moved off, we then flooded the site to a level of 1.4 to 1.5 ODN. This created an extensive flooded landscape. On the 22nd of January, eight cranes circled the reserve and flew off to the east. We didn't they didn't land, I suspect this was due to the map people on site. There were too many people to be able to close the site instantly. And we didn't expect them back until February. Half past two on the same day, Three more cranes were seen circling Willow Tree Fen. Um, and again, they didn't land as there were too many people on site, but by 10 past three, the reserve was finally closed. Uh, these cranes flew off west and landed near Baston Fen Nature Reserve. So gates locked and signs up, but despite this, over the coming season, we still had many people ignore the and try and access the site. For this reason, we set up a dawn till dusk watch staff by staff by volunteers 130 days 650 shifts and over 2,000 volunteer hours this season 28th of january three cranes landed us and were seen on site and we believe that these were asked from last year so our chicken survived its first winter despite all the odds last year there were 60 breeding cranes pairs in the uk they lay two eggs each, given a max potential of 120 juveniles. And out of all these possible birds, only 23 fledged. For the next month, all three cranes were roosting and feeding on site, spending most of their time across local farmland. They seem to find a spot, favour it, until they've either been disturbed or depleted out of food. On the 10th of Feb, the male was a scene attempting to drive the juvenile away. By the 2nd of March, he had finally succeeded. The male had been chasing the juvenile for the last few weeks, but the young bird is clearly among his little crane and stuck very close to her. We had a report of a single crane flying east over Spalding, and this could have easily been our juvenile. On the 5th of March, Crane Watch 2021 began. 
Well, the second, sorry, the 17th of March, the pair started to nest. They typically build a nest in a patch of wet reed, snip off the vegetation, creating a swan-like nest. They create a moat around the nest, which acts as a nursery for the chick. And when they, when the chick increases the security of the nest, they started nesting on the 17. 49 days earlier than the previous year. Up until this point, the cranes are joined at the hip, and as soon as one disappears, and the other is still on site, you know, the nest. Incubation is 30 days, and they both take it in turns and do their shifts. They hatched on the 17th of April, 47 days earlier than the previous year. They spend the first few days on the nest uh, while the chick finds its feet in the nursery, and then leave the nest to begin foraging nearby. Both parents are very attentive and often one is looking after the chick while the other is on sentry duty. They made the most of the crane bridges that we built. On one occasion, the pair began bugling at something in the vegetation. The male puffed up and confronted while the female gathered both chicks and retreated very quickly across the crane bridge into the wet reed. The male backed off slowly, retreating across the bridge once the chicks would move to safety. They're excellent parents. The Attached video, which hopefully should have been playing, shows that the two chicks are about just over two weeks old. They're incredibly lively and alert, and everything is going to plan. There you go. Uh, this was filmed from our viewpoint. Unfortunately, on the 3rd of May, after a cold, wet night, both chicks had disappeared. This was either due to the predation or exposure. We, no idea. Um, we knew that we'd lost the chicks because the parents were seen flying around. But over the coming weeks, they showed the right behavior in a second attempt. And again, this should play and you should be hearing the cranes bugling but we saw all the right bit. There we go. But unfortunately, it never really came to anything. The pair stayed on territory defending it from several other pairs over the season, up until fairly recently, when they started to spend more and more time off-site foraging within the surrounding landscape and using the reserve as a, a safe place from being disturbed or for roosting. But it's not just being about cranes. This year on Crane Watch, we've seen 97 species of bird, 11 butterfly, 12 dragonfly, 12 mammal, and one reptile. The reserve has fundamentally changed to one where people immerse themselves into a landscape with views of all these species behaving naturally and truly experiencing the Lincolnshire fens and its big skies. Little chap, the common house sparrow, has got to be my favourite of the year. Anything that tried to fly or crawl over the bridge while on Crane Watch was taken out and devoured. Nothing was safe. Just to sit still, watch for a couple of hours, was not only good for the soul, but it was resulted in some incredible, unforgettable wildlife moments. 